no reason. An unarmed teenager shot dead on a Saturday afternoon. How did this happen? Moments earlier, Dorian Johnson says he and his friend Big Mike were walking in the middle of a neighborhood street when a police car pulls up. And the officer says, get the f out of the street verbatim. It was his words. Johnson says a squad car starts to leave but goes into reverse, backing up within inches of the teens. At that time, he uh, reached out the window with his left arm. He grabbed onto my friend Big Mike's throat and he's trying to uh, pull him in a vehicle. What little police have said differs sharply. Police say the two struggle over the officer's gun. There was at least one shot fired within the car. Mike Brown's friend says Brown was just trying to get away, not fighting for the gun. I saw the fire come out the burrow and I uh, instantly knew that it was a gun. I looked at my friend Big Mike and I saw that he was struck in the chest or upper region because I saw blood splatter down his side, his right area. And at that time, we both uh, took off running. Another witness is watching from a distance. The officer gets out of his vehicle and pursues Michael as he's shooting his weapon. Michael jerks his body as if he was hit. And at that time, he turned around with his hands up uh, beginning to tell the officer that he was unarmed and to tell him to stop shooting. Then he turns around, faces the officer, and puts his hands up, and the officer continues to shoot him until he goes down to the ground. I watched him until his body stopped moving, and then I ran. And we just got another call stating that uh, as the officer involved shooting at Canfield and Cabra Creek. As crowds gather, Brown's uncle rushes over to identify his nephew, but police hold him back. Brown's mother, desperate for any detail. Half many times my son was shot. We don't even know that. Police do, but refuse to reveal even that irrefutable fact. Susan Candiotti, CNN, New York. Yeah, first, I'm actually going to go to two eyewitnesses to the shooting, Don, because we have those with us, Piaget, okay. Crenshaw, and Tiffany Mitchell. They were there, and along with Tiffany's attorney, Peter Cohen, they say that they witnessed what happened that night. Tiffany, I want to start with you. You say that you did not see what led up to the shooting. When you showed up on the scene, uh, it, the altercation was already in progress. But we have video that I believe you shot of what happened. Let's take a look at this and you can tell us what you saw. What is this? Okay, what I saw was when the cop and Michael were like wrestling through the window 
it looked as if Michael was pushing off and the cop was trying to pull him in. Then the cop sh shot a fire through the window. Michael breaks away and he starts running away from the officer. The officer gets out of his vehicle and pursues Michael as he's shooting his weapon. Michael jerks his body as if he was hit, then he turns around, face the officer, and puts his hands up, and the officer continues to shoot him until he goes down to the ground. So, okay. Tiffany, let me, let me ask you this, though, because the video that we have up, this is, we talk, you and I talked earlier about after and the dad. Is this the, we believe this is the father in the video, so there's a police officer walking up here that you're looking at. Yeah, okay. And then that, this is the father, and we believe he's going to the body, that's what's blurred. In okay, there. that's his uncle that's walking that's up to uncle. the, okay. yes. So, so, explain to us what happened. Okay, whenever his uncle walked up to him to try to see if that was him because everybody in the neighborhood was telling him that his nephew was shot, um, he tried to walk up and see if that was him and then the officers immediately run to him and tell him to get back behind the tape. And, that's and he ex that's I'm sorry. What, sorry, that's what we're looking at right now. And so they were trying to go to the body and the family members were being blocked. Yes. Piaget, you got, did you get a better... Um, did, did you get a better, were you uh, able to see better of what happened, the, the confrontation in the car and the shooting? Um, well, when I first looked out of my window, it was because Tiffany was calling me to come down. You know, we were on our way to work. So I have, my video isn't from that time, but I actually saw with my own eyes, the conference, starting with the confrontation at the window, it just looked like it was a tussle. Some struggle going on, I couldn't really tell really from my angle, but then I saw the police just get out and chase him for forcefully down the street and shoot him down. And Piaget, when you saw this out your window, when you say you saw a tussle at the window, do you mean that Michael Brown was outside of the police car and the policeman was inside the police car and they were sort of arm wrestling through the window? Or what yes, ma'am. Okay. I mean, like he was out, uh, Michael Brown, I mean, sorry, Michael was outside of the police car. And the police was inside and just seemed like he was just trying to, it was just some kind of Michael trying to get away really quickly and the police wouldn't let him. So did, then did you that's ever when I heard the see, shots fired. Did you ever see a moment where Michael was in the police car? No, ma'am. Because that's what police are saying, that they were in the police car and there the was a tussle inside the police car. And at no time, and I know that you weren't there from the very beginning, Piaget uh, or Tiffany, but at no time did you see Michael Brown in the car. No, no, not at all. At all. And in your estimation, he was trying Don, to get away. Uh, Go ahead. Don, Go one ahead. other important thing that uh, perhaps these young ladies aren't, aren't saying is there, there was a, if you look at the video, there was a good deal of distance between where the officer uh, fired at uh, Michael Brown and, uh, you know, where he was hit and where the officer was. I mean, he was, I think, well away from the officer is my understanding from looking at the video and, yes. and talking to him. He was really ladies. far away from the vehicle whenever the fatal shot was fired. Piaget, did you ever see a moment where it looked as if Michael Brown was reaching for the officer's gun? No, I couldn't, I couldn't see that closely from my balcony. I could actually see the opposite side of the car, but he was outside of the car and it just looked like a struggle was going on. And the police actually shot kind of carelessly. They shot um, my neighbor's building that was on the opposite side of the police car. And they then later came and removed that bullet. Mm -hmm. So anybody could have been standing right there. Did you, how do you guys feel about the response from the police department and from, I mean, this is, this is your area, your town, St. Louis, Ferguson. Uh, I, I think, PJ, you live in North County, right, which is where yes. Ferguson is, and you live in St. Louis County, correct, Tiffany? But I live in St. Louis City. You live in the city of St. Louis. I feel like it's very unfair. If he was trying to get away from him, why did he continue to shoot at him? Exactly. Like, I, I still don't get that part at all. Like, why was he killed trying to get away from the officer? And even when he turned around and put his arms in the air, he was then overkilled, shot multiple times. How far away did he get from the police car? Oh, he ran a good 20 feet down the street. Yeah, it was a ways. And if you can look at the vehicle, um, I'm sorry, if you can look at the photo, he was way behind the vehicle whenever he was fatally shot. And he was facing the officer with his hands up whenever he went down. Tiff, uh, Piaget, that first shot that you heard, did that come from the police car? Yes, ma'am. And could you tell who fired that first shot? Uh, well, I, when I looked out the window, I saw the original tussle going on. I quickly just turned around, grabbed my purse, tried to go to run to the other window. And at that time, it was over with. I heard the shots fired, and I saw the 
hold with the building in it, and Michael was running down the street at that time. So. All right, guys. Uh, we really appreciate you um, coming on, on CNN, Tiffany Piaget, and also Peter. Boy, uh, you, you guys are really composed considering what you witnessed. And again, it, it's, it's, we're glad that you're here, and we hope that there's peace and there's calm in your town. And if you guys want to come back and talk to us, we'll have you anytime. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks so much for sharing your story. Thank you, guys. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.